Architectural marvels come in all sizes and shapes, and among the most impressive are the world's largest domes. These massive structures have stood the test of time, and they continue to inspire with their beauty and grandeur. From ancient wonders to modern engineering feats, these colossal structures showcase the creativity of human design, leaving a lasting imprint on the landscapes they grace. So join me as we embark on a journey through the world of architecture to explore the top 15 largest domes on the planet, starting with number 15. AT&T Stadium While it no longer holds the record today, from 2009 until 2013, AT&T Stadium had the world's largest dome. Located in Arlington, Texas, the stadium is home to the Dallas Cowboys, although it's used for a range of other activities such as concerts, basketball, soccer, rodeos, motocross, and professional wrestling. Thanks to its capacity of between 80 to 105,000 people, it's easy to fit in a ton of spectators and hold a ton of events, and it's because of this that its massive 275-meter-long retractable dome is often in use. Number 14. Global Vipassana Pagoda while its dome shape is a bit unconventional, the Global Vipassana Pagoda gets a spot on this list for holding the title of being the world's largest stone dome. It's located in northwest Mumbai, and it serves as a meditation dome for those who wish to practice Vipassana, which is one of the oldest Buddhist meditation styles in existence. Yet, whether you're a practitioner of Buddhism or a regular tourist, it's hard not to appreciate this massive yet beautiful golden structure. Number 13. The Superior Dome Despite looking more like a landed UFO than a sports dome, the Superior Dome holds the distinction of being, of all things, the world's largest wooden dome. Located on the campus of North Michigan University, it's primarily used for football, lacrosse, and track and field, and it can hold about 16,000 people. However, what really sets it apart is its price. After all, while most of the other buildings on this list cost the modern equivalent of hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, the Superior Dome cost the 2023 equivalent of just $53.6 million. Number 12. Royal Albert Hall the Industrial Revolution led to a meteoric rise in the use of wrought iron, and one of the products of this rise was London's Royal Albert Hall. Opened by Queen Victoria in 1871, it is one of London's most important cultural hubs. Over its 152-year history, it's hosted countless performances and concerts, although non-artistic showings such as suffragette meetings, speeches from Winston Churchill and Albert Einstein, and exhibition bouts by Muhammad Ali have all taken place here. Best of all, this has happened underneath what is still considered to be the world's largest wrought iron dome. In my opinion, it beautifully captures the spirit of the Victorian age. Number 11. Norfolk Scope The retro, futuristic style of Norfolk Scope may look like a blast from the past, but it turns out that it holds the very modern record for being the world's largest reinforced concrete dome. Located in the city of Norfolk, Virginia, it was designed by world-renowned architect Pier Luigi Nervi and includes an 11,000-person arena, a 2,500-person theater, and a 10,000-square-foot exhibition hall, plus a 600-car parking garage. Interestingly enough, it is known as the Scope due to the venue's ability to be used for multiple different purposes. And while it was built about 55 years ago, this fascinating dome continues to be well-loved by the people of Norfolk to this very day. Number 10. Singapore National Stadium Of all the structures out there, the one that holds the top spot for having the world's largest dome is Singapore National Stadium. Built in order to replace the old National Stadium, which was demolished back in 2010, the new one broke ground promptly after and was completed in 2014 at a cost of nearly $2 billion. Built to host football, rugby, track and field, and cricket, the 55,000-seat facility has many purposes and has since been used for events such as the 2015 Southeast Asian Games and multiple matches of the Asian Football Federation Championship. However, beyond the impressive size, it's its impressive dome that truly makes it one of a kind. At 83 meters in height and a mind-boggling 810,000 square feet, it is absolutely massive. It can be put up or retracted depending on the weather and was built with the local climate in mind. After all, Singapore has a tropical climate, and so in order to make the heat and humidity more bearable for spectators, the dome was designed to inflect sunlight, while natural airflow is used to cool spectators without having to rely too much on air conditioning. So the Singapore National Stadium truly is a top-tier place to catch a game. Number 9. People's Salvation Cathedral 
While still under construction, the People's Salvation Cathedral in Bucharest, Romania has received the distinction of having the second tallest dome on the planet. Set to serve as the primary cathedral of the Romanian Orthodox Church, it will be completed by 2025, and despite not being fully finished, it's the world's largest and tallest Eastern Orthodox Cathedral. At a current height of 127 meters, an expected height of 135 meters once finished with a cross, it already towers above the Bucharest skyline. Coolest of all, the shiny gold of the church's multiple domes shine brightly over the city, while the interior is already shaping up to be quite beautiful. Yet, despite the cathedral's grandeur, many people are upset about the project as a whole. It's projected to cost a staggering 400 million euros. There have been complaints that this expenditure is a waste of money, especially given that the fact Romania is a country where a large percentage of homes don't even have indoor plumbing. In fact, many have called for the money to be redirected to hospitals or schools, both of which the country is in dire need of. It is also worth mentioning that the Romanian Orthodox Church has also been caught up in corruption scandals, and many think that corruption is likely playing a role in the decision to build such an expensive cathedral. To top that off, there are many commentators who think that the cathedral's proportions are oversized and built in bad taste, adding further insult to injury. But now I'll send it back to you. Do you think that the People's Salvation Cathedral is a good-looking structure, or is it gaudy and an overpriced pet project? Let me know down in the comments below. Number 8. Desert Dome While Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium may not be all that well-known outside the state of Oklahoma, the one major thing it has going for it is its status as the world's largest indoor desert, which is located inside one of the world's largest glazed geodesic domes. A major Omaha landmark, the artificial desert spans across two floors and it's split into three parts, the Namib Desert of Southern Africa, the Red Center of Australia, and the Sonoran Desert of the Southwest United States. These three parts are divided by a 17-meter tall central mountain that goes down the middle, and each desert has its own unique characteristics. For example, in the Namib Desert section, there's a 9-meter tall sand dune containing 300 tons of red sand. The desert's filled with caves, and it's within these caves that you can find 21 reptile species from Africa and Australia. Some, such as the Death Adder, the Cape Cobra, and the Inland Taipan are some of the most venomous snakes on the planet. The Red Center, on the other hand, mimics some of Australia's famous topography and includes a model of the Ayers Rock, or Uluru, which is the world's largest monolithic rock, and the Wave Rock, which is an overhang of colorful granite caused by water carrying dissolved minerals. The Sonoran Desert has lots of cool species too, and includes peccaries, bobcats, and even rattlesnakes. In fact, the rattlesnake section is so large that it holds the record for being the world's largest indoor rattlesnake exhibit. And all in all, the entire section has 14 species of reptiles and amphibians. This is all capped off with the so-called Desert Dome Sunroom. This is an area of the dome filled with windows and skylights, and its purpose is to help reptiles and amphibians safely hatch out of their shells. So, whether you want to see younger animals developing or older animals in action, a visit to the Desert Dome is an understandable choice. Moving on to number 7, the Florence Cathedral. While many of the largest buildings from the Middle Ages and the Renaissance have been overshadowed by larger, more modern renditions, the Florence Cathedral has held a special title for nearly 600 years. That's because ever since 1436, it's held the distinction of having the largest brick dome ever constructed. Work on the cathedral began all the way back in 1296, and after about 140 years of continuous labor, it was completed in 1436. A centerpiece of the city of Florence, this UNESCO World Heritage Site is absolutely stunning, as it features imposing columns, beautiful pieces of artwork, and most notably, an awe-inspiring dome. While the original plan was to build a Gothic dome, after several decades a new architect was installed, and in 1367 he decided to shift to a more traditional Mediterranean dome made completely out of brick. This was done largely due to the fact that bricks are a relatively lightweight material. Best of all, thanks to some rather ingenious design features such as the use of stone and iron chains, and the use of two twin shells made of differing materials, the resulting dome was far larger than anything built before it. Featuring a rather uncommon octagonal base, it has an exterior diameter of about 55 meters and an internal diameter of 45 meters, making it absolutely massive. The inside of the dome is also adorned with a stunning fresco, painted by famed artist Giorgio Vasari and Federico Zuccari. It features a host of religious themes, of course, with parts of it including an angelic chorus with the instruments of the Passion, a series of saints, a triad of figures representing a gift from the Holy Ghost, 
representations of faith, hope, and charity, a region of hell dominated by deadly sin, and an area showing the triumph of the Catholic Church. All in all, this massive piece of art features no less than 700 characters and is incredibly complex in both symbolism and artistic technique. So yeah, this dome is truly a must-see on your next visit to Florence. Number 6. Treasury of Atreus while the dome of the Treasury of Atreus may not be all that large by modern standards, it was the largest dome around until the time of the ancient Romans. Built between 1300 and 1250 BC by the ancient Greeks, its name is a bit deceiving, as it's not in fact a treasury, but instead a tomb. Now, exactly who lays in the tomb is still uncertain. However, the immense labor involved in its construction and its similarities to the citadel of Mycenae suggest that it was intended for a ruler of Mycenae. Why exactly the tomb is so large is unclear, although some historians believe that it may have been a symbol of Mycenae's increasingly dominant status during this part of the Bronze Age. However, over time, history forgot this incredible tomb. In fact, it wasn't until 1700 that Venetian engineer Francesco van Dyck found the tomb, and it wasn't until the 1800s that the tomb was actually excavated. Despite its mysteries, what is clear is that the tomb is a so-called Corbel Dome, and to this day, it's the largest Corbel Dome in the world. In essence, a corbelled dome is made from using a form of dry construction, where each stone is laid on top of one another, with each projecting a bit more inwards until the stones meet at the top with a capstone. This, in turn, creates a domed roof. And while it is an ancient technique, it's still seen in limited use up until modern times, with the corbelled domes of the houses in the southern Italian town of Alberobello being some of the world's most famous. However, it should be noted that the treasury of Atreus is not in perfect condition. Back in its heyday, the facade was decorated with marble columns and sculptures, and its artwork was in better shape. However, that doesn't mean that it's not a cool archaeological spot, and if you're looking to visit, you're in luck. And that's because the treasury of Atreus can still be visited to this day, making it a cool tomb to see if you ever find yourself on Greece's Peloponnesian Islands. Number 5. The Hagia Sophia while St. Peter's may be the world's most famous religious building, the Hagia Sophia and its beautiful dome are arguably just as iconic. First built all the way back in 360, it more or less amassed its present-day external features by 537, and over its history has served various different uses. Its very first intended role was as the main Christian cathedral of the Eastern Roman Empire. Since the Western Roman Empire had fallen by this point, this essentially meant that it was the main holy site of what has now evolved into the Greek Orthodox Church. It retained this title until 1453, when, after a quick 55-day siege, Constantinople fell to the Ottomans. Once the Ottomans took over, they almost immediately converted the Hagia Sophia into a mosque, destroying or covering most of the Christian iconography, and therefore completely changing its function. It remained a mosque until the year 1935, when it became a museum under the secular Turkish president Ataturk, and it remained a museum until 2020. However, in 2020, Turkish President Erdogan converted the Hagia Sophia into a mosque in order to show his commitment to increased Islamification. While this drew a considerable amount of foreign criticism from secular scholars and political commentators alike, the Hagia Sophia nevertheless remains a mosque to this very day. Now, beyond its rich history, the Hagia Sophia is significant for a few different reasons. The first is because its sheer size is an absolute marvel of human engineering. After all, it comes in at 82 meters in length, 73 meters in width, and 55 meters in height, making it far larger than practically every other building in the city. Beyond its physical stats, the Hagia Sophia also stands apart due to its ornate architecture, as it used large marble pillars and intricate mosaics in order to create an awe-inspiring atmosphere. However, the one true standout is the incredible dome. Beyond being massive, the dome has a unique design feature. The entire perimeter is covered with windows, and each window opens up to a row of gilded mosaics. These windows not only relieve some of the structural stress of the dome, but let in an incredible amount of light, which in turn gives the dome and the church as a whole an awe-inspiring aesthetic. Number 4. Basilica of Our Lady of Peace While St. Peter's Basilica may be the largest basilica in the world by surface area, the Basilica of Our Lady of Peace is even larger by other metrics. Built quite recently in 1989, it was commissioned by Félix Houphé-Boigny, who was the first president of the Ivory Coast. 
However, the reasons behind its construction were a bit odd. You see, he intended the church to be a symbol of his personal brand, as it was part of his larger plan to transform his relatively small hometown of Yamasukuro to the Ivory Coast's political and administrative capital. Although not an exact replica, the design of the basilica is heavily influenced by the Basilica of St. Peter in the Vatican. Although its surface area of over 300,000 square feet and large cross atop its dome makes it larger in both height and overall area than its European counterpart. In terms of capacity, it can fit a total of 18,000 parishioners, and it's outfitted with beautiful Italian marble and French contemporary stained glass. Zooming into the dome, it's absolutely massive, coming in at more than twice the diameter of St. Peter's in Rome. While the base is much lower than St. Peter's and therefore not as high, it makes up for it in size, while its multicolored stained glass makes a quite the statement. Yet despite all its beauty, the basilica has proven to be a waste of money in more ways than one. On one hand, the basilica was prohibitively expensive for a country like the Ivory Coast. You see, it cost about $300 million to build, and given the fact that this was about double the Ivory Coast's national debt at the time, this type of project was simply unjustified, especially in a country where poverty is widespread. To make matters worse, it also sees very little use. Despite being intended to be the world's greatest basilica, very few pilgrims come to visit it, and despite its large capacity, it only has a few hundred weekly parishioners. Instead, the most well-attended church in the city is actually the older and more established Cathedral of St. Augustine. And to date, the only time that the Basilica of Our Lady of Peace was filled to capacity was during the funeral of President Buanyi. As a result, in a country where only 17% of people identify as Catholic, it's more or less an unused relic, and it really doesn't seem like this is going to change anytime soon. Number 3. St. Peter's Basilica of all the churches in the Catholic world, the one with perhaps the most famous dome of them all is St. Peter's Basilica. Considered to be the largest basilica in the world, it has a capacity of 60,000 people and was first built back in 1506 to replace a smaller rendition built by the Emperor Constantine in 329. This new and improved basilica took nearly 120 years to build, and as you might expect, this long period of time led to a bit of turnover with the architects. Weirdly enough, that turnover made a massive difference to the basilica's dome. You see, the very first architect was Donato Bramante, who included multiple domes and one tower on either side in what would amount to a Byzantine-inspired Greek cross church. However, once Bramante died, he was replaced by architect Antonio de Sangallo. De Sangallo realized that Bramante's design was not strong enough to hold up the multiple domes, and so he created an entirely different plan. Yet the final plan that we see today was crafted by none other than the immortal Michelangelo. He decided to simplify the design by pushing the nave farther back and creating one large dome rather than multiple smaller ones, and the end result was absolutely incredible. The dome of the Vatican is a monstrous 42 meters in diameter and is 137 meters in height from the floor to the top. The dome is divided into 16 ribs and it's decorated by a series of figures that include busts of 16 of the popes buried in the basilica, imagery of Jesus, the Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, St. John the Baptist, and various apostles, plus several angels. At the very top of the dome, there's an image of God surrounded by angels, and all in all, the entire thing, when taken as one piece, is highly symbolic and awe-inspiring, even for those who aren't religious. It's also worth mentioning that the basilica has its fair share of quirks. For example, the structure is supported by unconventional twisted columns, while at each corner there are ornate sculptures that are absolutely stunning. In order to ensure the artwork on the walls would last forever, it was made using micro-mosaics rather than paint, making the basilica truly an immortal structure. And when you further consider that additional attached buildings such as the Vatican Museum, Sistine Chapel, and Apolistic Palace further complement the Vatican's already stunning features, it's not hard to see why millions of people visit St. Peter's each and every year. Number 2. The King Dome while the King Dome may no longer stand today, it gains a spot on this list for previously being a world record holder. That's because before its demolition in the year 2000, it held the record for having the largest reinforced concrete dome on the planet. Located near Seattle, Washington, the King Dome was opened in 1976, with the intention of it being the longtime home of Seattle Maine sports teams, chiefly the Seattle Seahawks of the NFL, Seattle Mariners of the MLB, Seattle Supersonics of the NBA, and the Seattle Sounders of the former NAFL and current MLS. 
For years, the stadium was used for nearly all of Seattle's main sporting events, and its massive concrete dome made quite the statement. However, despite being fascinating at first, the King Dome soon began to fall out of favor. Fans began to complain that it was too small for football, and not intimate enough for baseball, although at first these concerns were mostly ignored. Yet it soon became clear that the dome, which was necessary in a city as rainy as Seattle, was starting to become a safety concern. In order to save a few bucks, the county had cut corners when constructing the dome, and this led to leaks forming before even the King Dome officially opened. Yet rather than properly fix the problems, the county instead decided to make haphazard repairs, and over time these cheap band-aid fixes came back to bite them in the ass. This problem came to a head in 1993, after the county decided to strip off the outer roof coating and replace it with a special coating in a bid to fix the leaks. While this was happening, the contractor in charge decided to pressure wash the new dome, causing the water to seep through the roof. This made many of the tiles on the roof unstable, and on July 19th of 1994, an incident happened where four 12-kilogram waterlogged acoustic ceiling tiles fell into the seating area while the Mariners were on the field preparing for a game. While no one was hurt, this type of incident easily could have turned deadly, and as a result the game was cancelled and the Mariners were forced to play on the road. And while millions were spent on further repairs, this incident further emphasized the need to fully replace the stadium. In 1995, the decision was made to go ahead with the creation of an entirely new stadium, and in 2000 the county finally went ahead with the demolition of the kingdom. Despite its massive size, the entire thing collapsed in under 20 seconds, and to this day it holds the world record for being the largest building by volume to ever be imploded. Number 1. The Pantheon Rome, it's home to endless historical attractions, but of all of them, the Pantheon is easily one of the most iconic. Considered to be one of the best preserved ancient Roman buildings in the city, it was first built by the Emperor Hadrian sometime around 126 AD to replace a similar building that had burnt down a few years earlier. While originally used as a temple, in 609 AD it was converted to a Catholic church, and to this day it still function as one on Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays. Many historians believe that it's so well preserved precisely because it's constantly been in use, which is unlike many other ancient Roman buildings that fell into a state of disuse and disrepair once the Roman Empire fell. It also helps that the Pantheon also has become somewhat of a secular shrine as well, as it's the burial place of Kings Vittorio Emmanuel II and Umberto I of Italy, Umberto's wife Queen Margherita, and a few major artists such as Raphael, Annabale Caracci, and Taddeo Zoccaro. While the facade of large granite Corinthian columns is rather imposing, it's the inner dome that steals the show. Considered to be the largest unreinforced solid concrete dome in the world, it served as an archetype for the construction of most modern domes. Perhaps the coolest thing about it is that it uses different types of concrete throughout. For example, at its thickest point at the bottom, the dome's concrete is mostly travertine. As it goes up, it uses more terracotta, and at the very top, it uses tuffa and pumice, which are both very porous and light. In a rather clever design choice, at the very top, which is usually a dome's weakest point and the most vulnerable to collapse, it's got a circular opening. In other words, there's an intentionally placed hole in the roof. Now, on the surface, this may seem kind of silly. After all, when it rains, the opening allows water to flow inside the building. However, the reality is, is that it helps prevent damage to the Pantheon structure. Beyond preventing an all-out collapse due to water pressure or damage, all water that goes through is moderated by something known as the chimney effect. When it rains, the warm air inside the Pantheon naturally flows upwards to the hole, or oculus, in the roof. This in turn causes most rain to evaporate before entry, making it so there's far less rain in the Pantheon than there is outside. However, if the rain does get in, the circular hole causes it to fall to the dead center of the building. It's here that a drain whisks most of the water away, and just in case there's any extra, the center of the building is built on a slight slope so that any remaining water flows down into additional drains. So, I think you'd agree, the Pantheon is a perfect example of the marvels of ancient Roman engineering. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.